Hello, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now, Java is the official programming language of Android, and Java is used not only on mobile, but also on desktops and servers. And Java is quite a unique programming language, especially when compared to other programming languages like C. Now, there are some big differences that are easy to spot, like C is not object oriented Java is object oriented However, there are some key differences that affect the performance of programs written in C and programs written in Java. First of all, Java programs are not compiled to machine code. They are compiled to an intermediate code called bytecode, Java bytecode. And this Java bytecode is then executed on a Java virtual machine. So to fulfill the goal of write once, run anywhere, a Java virtual machine can be implemented on Linux, on Windows, on servers, on Android, and therefore the same bytecode, the same intermediate code can be run on that platform without needing to be recompiled. However, that means that when the program runs, it has to run through itself another program, this virtual machine, which of course uses CPU time, uses memory, and therefore that has an impact on the performance. The other big difference is that Java uses automated memory management. That means that if a program allocates some memory, allocates an object, the programmer doesn't need to worry about when that object is no longer needed. A thing called the garbage collector will run periodically and collect up all the bits of memory that are no longer needed and discard them. The problem is the garbage collector is an expensive thing to run. For example, if you're writing a game and you need to update the frames every 16 milliseconds, having the garbage collector run right at the time when you're trying to update the frame will affect the performance of your app. Now C is quite different. C compiles directly down to machine code. So if it's running on a desktop PC running an Intel chip, it will compile directly to the Intel machine code. If it's running on an ARM chip on a smartphone, it will compile directly down to the machine code for the ARM chip. And it doesn't have automated memory management. If the programmer allocates memory, it's up to the programmer to free that memory at a time that the programmer feels is the best. So therefore, it's generally considered that uh, Java is slightly slower than C when the two are run side by side. But I thought it would be interesting to see how that speed comparison looks on Android. What is the speed difference between a C program and a Java program? Now, normally Java programs are written using the SDK, the Software Development Kit, and Google also release a thing called the NDK, the Native Development Kit, which allows you to write C and C++ programs for Android. So what I've done is I've written an app that uses both Java code and C code and implements the same functionality in both languages with an attempt to see how much longer it takes in one language compared to the other. Now the app does three things. First of all, it calculates the SHA1 hash of a block of data. Then it calculates the first million prime numbers using trial by division. And then finally it runs a mathematical function that I wrote and it runs that a million times to see how long it takes. Now there are a couple of things I want to mention before we look at the actual results. What well, first one is about optimization. Now every software engineer knows that software should be optimized to run uh, faster on each platform that it's being deployed to. Now, while I was writing this code, because I was looking at the, how many nanoseconds it took to run each particular function, because that was the idea of the benchmark, I was quite surprised at how drastically I could change the results by implementing a function one way or another. Now, I've tried my best to optimize the Java code and the C code so that they give a fair test. Now, if you want more details about the optimizations that I did and the comparison between the C code and the Java code, please go over to the androidauthority.com website and read the written article that goes along with this video. It's also worth mentioning the Android Java virtual machines. Up to and including Android 4.4 KitKat, Android used a Java virtual machine codenamed Dalvik, and it was basically a Java virtual machine that interpreted the byte code and ran the appropriate instructions there and then on the processor. It had a thing called just-in-time compiling, which means that some sections of the code would be pre-compiled into the native machine code and called upon when needed, and that did give a boost to the performance of the virtual machine. However, from Android 5.0, the default virtual machine became ART, the Android runtime. Now, the Android runtime used ahead-of-time compiling which basically meant that when a program was installed, it was compiled at that moment in the background uh, onto the processor for the processor of your particular machine, probably an ARM processor, though it could of course be an Intel processor. And then with the advent of Android 6.0, what happened is that ARM had been working in the background with Google to improve that compiling stage in that ahead of time compiler so that the machine code that was generated was even more efficient. And that was known as the optimizing compiler. 
and we'll see in the results how those three different Java virtual machines affect the performance of the Java programs running on the phones. Now, I'd also like to point out that I run this benchmark on both 32-bit and 64-bit processors. And why that's important is because a lot of the code that's in my test app uses long integers. Now, traditionally in C and Java, an integer, a whole number, is 32 bits wide. However, there are things called long integers, which are 64 bits wide. Now, of course, if you're running a Java virtual machine on a 32-bit processor, but you have a 64-bit number, it has to do twice the work to process that number. Now, actually, it turns out that doing division, or specifically the modulus operator for working out the remainder, in Java on a 64-bit number is actually quite slow when running on a 32-bit machine. And we'll see that again reflected in the code. So what I did was I wrote this app and it runs these three tests in Java and in C and it reports the relative difference in the time. Now, I've run this test over 21 different devices. A big shout out to my colleagues at Android Authority for helping me run this on a wide range of devices. Some are 32-bit, some are 64-bit, some have KitKat, some have Marshmallow, some have Lollipop. Okay, and basically what I'm interested in is the difference in the speed between Java and C. I'm not interested in the absolute time. Of course, a modern day Snapdragon 820 processor is going to be faster than a quad core 32-bit processor from two years ago. But on the same processor, the Java and the C are both running and it's the difference between that performance that is interesting to us, not the absolute uh, speed. Now, once I ran the test, what I actually found was that the result grouped together quite nicely. You find that 32-bit lollipop, all the results were grouped into one area. 64-bit marshmallow, those results were all grouped together. So let's have a look at what I found out. So the first test was to take a block of data and create a hash, an SHA1 hash for that block of data. Now, here are the results. Now, again, this is the relative difference, the percentage difference between Java and C. And the first thing we see is that Java is slower. Now, in the worst case scenario, which is on an Android 5 32-bit device, it was 300%, 296%, 300% slower, which is four times slower. Now, as we go down through the different devices, we find that next you find 64-bit Android 5, you find 32-bit Android 4.4, but the fastest of all of these was Android 6.0 running on a 64-bit processor. So for a real-world application like creating cryptographic hashes, we find that Java is actually 60% slower than C on the most modern 64-bit processors, and in fact, up to four times slower compared to C on older devices. Now the next test works out the first million primes by using trial by division. Now as I pointed out earlier, I'm using 64-bit integers for this, and 64-bit division on a 32-bit Java program is actually quite slow, and we'll see that now in the results. And the results here are quite amazing. If we look at 32-bit Android Marshmallow, we see that Java is 263% slower than C. We also find that 32-bit Android 5 and 32-bit Android 4.4 are significantly slower, 172% and 240% respectively. However, once we move over to 64-bit, because we're using those 64-bit integers, we find that Android 5.0 on a 64-bit process was only 38% slower. And look at this, Android 6.0 on a 64-bit processor is only 3% slower. Now that 3% difference is really quite amazing and that's a lot to do with the new uh, Android runtime with its ahead of time compiling and the optimizing compiler that went into Android 6.0 Marshmallow. Now my third test runs a mathematical function that I invented, it was my own invention, it just does some multiplications and some addings and division, both integer and uh, floating point, and it comes up with a result at the end. And that's run a million times to see how fast it runs on Java and C. Now again, like the prime number testing, here I'm using 64-bit integers. And we can see the difference between a Java virtual machine running 32-bit and 64-bit integers. So looking at the worst results first, here we find that Android 4.4 on a 32-bit machine is 384% slower, 
Android 5.0 on a 32-bit machine is 259% slower, and Android 6.0 on a 32-bit machine is 191% slower. Now, once again, we move over to 64 bits, we find that Android 5.0 on 64 bits is only 52% slower. But here's the amazing thing, Java running on an Android 6.0 machine on a 64-bit processor was actually faster than the C code. Now, there could be a couple of reasons for this. One is definitely the optimizing compiler. Maybe it found a better optimization than the C compiler did and therefore was able to create faster code. And then when you run that a million times, that difference uh, is seen quite clearly. And the other thing, of course, to remember is that now, using this simple mathematical function, the garbage collector doesn't run at all. It doesn't need to run because it's just doing math. There isn't much memory allocation going on. So what does all this mean? Well, first of all, the choice between Android and C actually isn't that black and white. Because when you're writing an Android app, you actually want to have access to the Android UI, to the Android API, to the various Android services, including Google Play. And all of those are only available via Java. C is really only useful if you want to write a game engine or you've got some real heavy lifting to do and it will be quicker to do that in C. Now, previously, if you had that heavy lifting to do, it might have been worthwhile porting sections of your code, last sections of your code, to C to get the performance gain. However, what my quick testing has shown is that that performance gap is reducing rapidly. And in fact, in some cases, it looks now that Java is just as fast as, or even faster than C. Well, my name is Gary Sim from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Also, you should download and install the Android Authority app that will give you access to all the latest news and things that we are publishing. Also, please don't forget to use the comments below to tell me what you think about Java, what you think about C, what you think about Android development in general. It would be great to hear from you. Also, if you want to, please head over to the Android Authority forums. You can use this link here, and there you can ask me any questions you want about this video, including about the app that I wrote, including about C, including about Java, and I'll try and help you if I can. And last of all, but not least, don't forget to subscribe to AndroidAuthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.